boy. Previously in the tour of Connecticut. Whoa, 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 whoa. Good morning. We're doing a rest day today, um, meaning no riding, which is great because our bums are quite sore. And so we are walking this time. We're going to be walking to downtown Mystic. And it's about a mile and a half from where uh, we're staying. So it'll be a nice walk. And we're going to have breakfast, um, get a couple of treats and uh you know just enjoy the water so if you guys are not familiar many of you may not be if you're not from connecticut mystic is a an old sea town can we say that fishing village it's a well there's an old mystic which i assume i think is the old fishing village mm -hmm. um right off the coast of um right off the coast here and um sits along the Long Island Sound, right? Right. We were here uh, last year. We did a century ride from Mystic to Rhode Island and back. Also, uh, plans have changed on what we decided to do for, uh, for home. returning home. And I'll have Jason talk a little bit about it. Yeah, so we decided to uh, originally we were planning on riding from uh from mystic all the way back to danbury um which would have been in one day which would have been i think 129 miles or or something around there um so like 200k close to 200k um, we were originally planning on doing that all in one ride. Um, we decided we're going to split that route into two rides and stay at Middletown for one night, which is around the halfway point of that route. So we'll use the same route that Joy already planned, but we'll just do it in two pieces and, uh, you know, split into two days. And we decided to do it that way just because, not that we don't think we could complete the route all in, in one day. Um, I think physically we could do it. It's just that it would be a really long day um, with the gravel bikes with carrying our luggage. Um, we've been going quite a bit slower than we would you know, normally go on our road bikes. Um, so it, it probably would be, it probably would take us at least 12 hours of riding time to complete that ride. And then if you factor in some stops along the way, it's, you're, we're looking at probably a 15 hour day that we're, we're out there. So pretty much from, from dawn till dusk, that has the potential to get stressful. You know when we're sort of up against the clock um you know if something were to go wrong during during that time and we sort of fall behind pace so to speak you know then it could get kind of stressful that w we might not make it home before dark um and so we didn't really want to you know to we want this to be a fun trip and we didn't want to just spend a really long day being potentially stressed out. So um, we think it'll be more relaxing if we split it into two rides and, um, you know, spend another night in one of these towns that we, we haven't been to before.
The fifth day of riding took us from Mystic to Middletown, a 59 mile trek in the heat. This ride differs from the previous ones as we have two major bridge crossings, both with separate bike paths, thankfully. The Gold Star Memorial Bridge connects Groton and, and New London and goes over the Thames River. The Aragoni Bridge connects Portland and Middletown and goes over the Connecticut River. I'm just gonna walk my bike down to the bottom here because I don't like this steep downhill here. Um, it's all right. Yeah. Sure, it'll get worse. <laughs> Well, we are starting uh, day five of riding. Yesterday, we took a rest day in Mystic, and uh, now we're riding to Middletown, which is 55 miles, uh, 3,000 feet of climbing. And uh, we're on this, Highway. Got a nice lane here. Kind of busy, but I feel pretty safe. Temperature today is hot. Sun is already starting to be down on us, and uh, probably high of 90. Hopefully, once we get off this highway, we get some shaded area. We get some shade so that we can uh, cool off a little bit. But as usual, we are riding into a headwind. So it is helping us. It's helping us keep us cool, to, to keep us cool. We're probably not gonna do a whole lot of recording today because we're running low on memory. The SD card's running full, and uh, I had ordered two more from Amazon, but unfortunately, they were not shipped on time. So much for the one day shipping. This was our first major bridge crossing by bike and that caused some anxiety for us. Joy has a fear of heights and despite being protected by metal barriers, riding over the edge of a bridge that overlooks a major body of water was terrifying for her. I was okay with it, but at the same time I was hoping the ride over the bridge wouldn't last too long. The sound of traffic whizzing by us did not help to alleviate our anxiety. Finally, the bridge ended and we were back on the ground again. We breathed a sigh of relief, hoping the next bridge crossing won't be as anxiety inducing. The 
temperature was starting to increase, but the shade from the trees helped to bring down the temperature a bit. That and the natural breeze as we were riding cooled off the sweat that pooled up on our skin. Well, uh, we're here stopped at a, another gas station, um, a sit-go gas station, 17.8 miles into the ride. And uh, yeah, I don't know what, actually don't know where we are. I think we may be in Colchester, maybe I'm wrong, or, or Norwich. Um, at any rate, it's hot out here. And so we're trying to stop as much as we can for water and drink as much as we can. Um, it, it is actually, it's pretty nice to ride under the shade, but once you're in the heat, it's like a sauna. Um, and I don't really mind the heat, um, as long as there's no humidity there. Really, just a small amount. I, I don't really feel a, a lot of humidity today. So it's, it's, um, a heat that I can actually, um, you know, that I can manage. Um, anyway, <laughs> just, uh, thinking back at the, one of the rides that we, or one of the, um, roads that we took earlier on and that was on the bridge and that gave me such anxiety riding over the bridge and over the water i have a fear of heights and so um that was really stress inducing for me The bum is starting to bother me. Um, I think it's been bothering me since mile 10, actually. Um, I was hoping that I would be recovered from that uh, since we took a day off yesterday, but I guess not so much. Um, so that's the only thing that's kind of really holding me back. Also, I think I might be losing my voice. Um, my, I'm feeling overall fine. I just, this, whatever I have, I'm fighting off. Um, I, I don't know, maybe it's still waking its way out, uh, and, uh, nose is, starts to run when I actually stop riding, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and blow my nose here. Uh, yeah, mile 31.6, and we have, um, let's see, it's a 50, 60, about 60 mile ride, so we have 30 more miles left to go, so trying to make sure that we're fueled up and we're hydrated. For about 17 miles, we took the airline trail, the same trail we've been riding on in the previous days. To pass time, we enjoyed some music from the Bluetooth speaker, listening to some 90s pop and hip hop, or some jazz. Whoa, whoa, shade. All right, I'm going to put my sunglasses away. I can get it. So, uh, one of the things that if you are ever if you ever want to do these types of long rides, um, one of the suggestions that I would say is uh, to eat. Yes, you have to eat a lot. 
Uh, when you feel good especially, you have to eat because there will be times where you're not going to feel great and you're not going to want to eat and you wish that you did because then you wind up uh, bonking um, and you don't feel great after that. So it's important to constantly be taking in calorie, calories as much as you can when you feel good. So yesterday, you know, on our day off, on our rest day, uh, we kind of, we fueled up. We ate a ton. Um, we had a big breakfast. We <coughs> we had a big breakfast. We had um, ice cream, and then we had a good-sized dinner. Uh, and knowing that you know we're doing this ride um, that could take a while, so it's really important to to get your fueling in when you feel good. Um, <clears throat> otherwise you're going to regret it when you don't feel great the ride seemed to be flowing nicely but what's a bike packing trip without some hike a bike I don't know what we're doing here but supposedly this is part of the trail. I hope it is. I see tire marks. Somehow there was a section of the trail that was not completed and therefore deemed unrideable. The trail turned into a running creek with overgrown brush along the sides. The only way to walk through it was to sacrifice dry feet for wet ones. Joy had no issue with this because it kept her feet nice and cool. I, on the other hand, was not having it. I don't enjoy having soggy socks and water sloshing around in my shoes. Oh, my God, this is like this one bit. Okay, one thing's for sure. At least the water keeps our feet nice and cool. Scale of 1 to 10, how much are you loving this? Zero. All right, so we got out of the uh, technical, unmaintained part of the trail. Uh, now we're on the nice, maintained part of the trail. So not sure what happened with that section. It looks like it's just a washed out stream. Um, it actually was nice to get uh, my feet wet, keep me nice and cool, because the sun is beating down on me, and I don't know where Jason is. Whew, my nose, I gotta stop and blow, blow my nose and find a nice shaded spot to do that. We finally landed ourselves on some pavement in Portland. From there, we rode over the second bridge, but this time it wasn't so bad. I think it had a wider bike path, which helped us feel more secure being away from the edge.
After crossing over the Aragoni Bridge, we found ourselves in the streets of Middletown, weaving in and out of some traffic to get to our destination. We intended on stopping at Neil's Donuts, but unbeknownst to us, it's closed on Mondays. That was a disappointment, but there was not much we could do about it. There are many things in life we have no control over, and the opening and closing of a donut shop was one of them. In the grand scheme of things, it was no big deal. Let's face it, I've eaten a few too many donuts in my lifetime anyway. At the Airbnb, we took a nice cold shower and washed our clothes. In case you're wondering how we washed and dried our clothes, the process was pretty simple. We would find either a sink or a tub and fill it with water. Joy packed a powdered laundry detergent that's specific to athletic wear and put two scoops in with the clothes, then left it to soak for approximately 30 minutes. After that, we would rinse the clothes in cold water and clean off any excess dirt. To dry them, we took a towel and placed it on the floor. We arranged the clothes so they all fit in the towel, then rolled the towel lengthwise like a sushi roll. one foot to keep the towel in place while twisting the towel as tightly as we could. This helps to wring out most of the water. After that, we hung the clothes on any suitable object we could find. 